Hi friends, it's Michelle Ladd with National Veteran Resources and today I have my friend Kevin and uh, Kevin is a veteran and Kevin works with East Texas Veterans Resource Center and uh, so today I've asked him to share a little bit about his military experience and we talked earlier about transitioning and what he does for veterans as they're transitioning and so uh, I always get in front of the veterans and spend a half an hour or so and talk to them about their experiences and um, what they would like to talk to about live. So Kevin and I talked about um, his experiences and what I would like to, first of all, um, I'd like to thank you for your services no problem. to our country. And um, I'm all about thanking heroes and everyone says I'm not a hero, but because you oh. <laughs> General consensus. Yes. Um, so tell us what branch you served. Um, I was in the Army for 13 years. 13 years of your life mm -hmm. in the Army. And share a little bit about your experiences. It's something that we talked about today. Well, like I said, uh, I grew up as a military brat is what some people call it. Uh, my dad was in the military when I was real little, so we moved around a lot. And eventually, following kind of in my dad's footsteps, my brother's footsteps, I went into the military myself. Um, my whole viewpoint of joining the military was the fact of I'm an American citizen, and I felt like it was my right to serve my country in peacetime and war. And I actually accomplished that. I did serve my country both in peacetime and war. And um, at 13 years, I'd done my duty and got out, and shortly afterward, got got my wonderful disability going and uh, you know I'm not gonna say that it's wonderful but you know it seems to be what a lot of us have done as of late after we get out is uh, a lot more veterans are um, having some struggles and issues with transitioning back mm -hmm. uh, so uh, some of that's mental health some of its physical issues you know um, I'm sure you've already interviewed amputees things like that mm -hmm. and you know when I got out I think the biggest thing that stuck out to my mind was I went and talked to a gentleman, he called him a counselor, that's what he was, and he said, well, I think I know what part of your problem is, and I was like, well, what do you think it is? And he says, well, well you're a husband, you're a dad, you're a son, you're a soldier, and you're a brother. And when I got out of the military, I was no longer a soldier, and like uh, so many stories, you know, the relationship, the marriage kind of faded, so I was no longer a husband, and didn't get to see my children very often, although I got to see them regularly, you know, as far as visitations and everything goes like that, but that kind of went, so, and he says, you lost half your identity, and I was like, I never really thought of that, because this is what you knew, this is what I did for 13 years, I am a soldier. Uh, I, I was a non-commissioned officer, went from private to non-commissioned officer, served, uh, was trained, trained others, you know, uh, all that wonderful stuff, and it was all gone. And it's like, wait, what do I do now? Wait, this, this is what I did before. This is who I was. I knew when I was getting up, when I was going down, I knew what mission was, I knew what was coming, you know, all these different things that was part of your job. Right. Uh, your, your, your occupation, your, your specialty, you knew what you needed to do. And then you get out and it's like, part of you's like, freedom! <laughs> you know, like, uh, like uh, I guess that uh, Highlander show, uh, I forgot what it was called, but anyway, you know, you're all real excited about the freedom, but then again, you kind of, it hits, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, freedom's great, it's wonderful, that's why we serve, is to defend the rights and freedoms of those who can't and keep the freedoms we have in our country. But then, you know, now you're out. Now what are you doing moving forward? This, that, and the other. And I know a lot of my brothers and sisters in arms is what I like to call them because I feel connected to every branch um, in some ways. Uh, there's a lot of experiences we've all had that are similar. And I, I said, you know, you had your certain job you did. Sometimes that job you did in the military, you don't have when you come out. That's right. not the same job you get to do. That's right. And it may be trouble getting into some kind of job that's just like what you did. You right. got, you know. So there's a big transition, a big difference in things. So with that, uh, unfortunately for me, when I transitioned out, uh, I went to work for uh, 
the Army Depot down the way. And, well, things didn't work out as good as I would, but I had happened to end up working on vehicles that had been hit with IEDs, and I didn't think it would bother me, but essentially it started wearing on me a little bit because I was there. And I, you know, I experienced vehicles that were hit, and the loss and different things like that, recovering vehicles on the side of a cliff, as I mentioned earlier, after driving through a minefield. Um, but it was like, I didn't think it would affect me, and then it got to the point where some of the skills I had and what I did while I was in started dwindling a little bit, you know, and I thought, well, maybe I don't need to be doing this job anymore. So my transition kind of lost the job, uh, thanks to, you know, part of the disability, which I'm not a ashamed of at all, uh, but in the same token, it, my job ended with the disability, and I, I went from there kind of back off into the woods to to the farm, and, you know, okay, I just, I can't function right, I don't know how to be in can, this capacity. Can I hold, can we hold just one second? Hey Dave, can you see us okay? We're having, I've had nothing but connection problems today, I needed to wait till somebody came on. Dave is saying thank you. I put my glasses on, so hey, Dave. Um, Dave is out there helping with PTSD in Rochester, New York. Dave, can you tell us, is our connection okay? Can you see us okay? I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to interrupt no you, but I had to go, hated to have you go through all this, and we, we can't even. Any Can anybody tell us, can you hear us? Can you see us fine? No one's speaking, so I'll watch. Uh, maybe there's a bit of a delay. I'm sorry, continue. Okay, now, where was I again? <laughs> you know, sometimes memory isn't always what it used to be. But no, um, you were just talking, you went back to the farm. Yeah, I basically went to the farm, uh, sort of lived out in the woods, kind of alienated myself, isolated myself, because I didn't feel like I was me. And this was before I talked to that guy about the identity stuff. Right. You know, I'm just not me. Nobody knows me. I don't right. know how to be me in this setting. Right. And I just isolated for a while. Uh, I enjoyed nature. Uh, that was a huge healing process for me, just being out in nature, hiking, uh, fishing, hunting, camping, whatever. Uh, sounds great, he says. Thank you, man. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, so, says, you know, it was really, I, I contribute a lot of my healing to that, not, not just that, but also spiritual growth as well while I was out mm -hmm. there. Um, and essentially, eventually got back out of the woods. I, I tell people this this way because essentially that's where I was at. I wasn't like a, uh, what do you call them, a s extreme survivalist or one of those people that bug out and just hide in bunkers. No, I wasn't that way, but <laughs> you know, I did. I kind of hid myself away from people and tried to avoid them a little bit, but when I came back out and started re-socializing and trying to reconnect, which is a huge, also a huge important part of transitioning back, is finding people you can connect with. Um, you know, I started seeing that hearing other veteran stories, started hanging out with a few veterans, started him talking to regular people in my local small community because I'm from a small town. Uh, and, you know, it was funny how everybody has a story. And everybody's story can be similar in some ways, but there's always some differences too. But the key point is you have a story to tell. And for those out there who are struggling to transition you know, I would love to say, focus on that story, because your story might actually be what can help someone get out of what I used to call the funk. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I got out and uh, eventually went to college using my GI Bill and everything. And once I did that, I got my bachelor's degree through my GI Bill and through vocational rehab, got my master's in counseling, and now I'm a licensed professional counselor in the state of Texas, intern. I'm still working on the intern hours, <laughs> but the whole point is uh, eventually I will be a fully licensed counselor, and I, when I was in my master's program, I worked a lot on research and looking at things about veterans with PTSD, mm. effects of veterans, multiple deployments on family, the children, things of that mm. nature. A lot of a lot of research out there, and I noticed, uh, you know, so many different things, and I learned, noticed all these different programs that help people. You know, and then I was like, wow, what, what could I do if I got into this capacity? And I did. I kind of come up with my own scheme, my own plan, you know. And uh, I was like, okay, hopefully, eventually, 
I can do something with wilderness therapy. That was a huge research proposal I had to do as my master's program. Oh, is that right? Wilderness yeah. therapy. Yeah, so I took, there wasn't a lot of information on wilderness therapy. And there was information about PTSD, so I would look up what little information I could find in wilderness therapy and what worked and why they used it. Then I looked at PTS, PTSD, whatever people are calling it these days, shell shock, uh, combat fatigue, combat stress. has had many names over the years. And what worked for those? And I said, this worked here, this worked here. Why not take this wilderness therapy and implement it here for the PTS, PTSD, etc. that people are going through? Mm -hmm. Because even back as far as World War II, or no, excuse me, World War One, they would have veterans after they got back home. They had gardens set up in some of the places where they were getting care. And they would tend to a garden. Right. I mean, that is a form of getting back to nature, getting back and doing something with your hands, and also mm -hmm. being productive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you become stagnant, it's hard to get out of that without some help. And one of the key things I'd like to bring up in that is uh, the whole time we served in the military, I cannot recall one single time that I did anything on my own. Right. We were a team. That's right. We had people that did each part, and all these little gears worked together to accomplish the task. And when we get out and try to isolate or do things on our own, that's another part of us that really gets hit. It really uh, changes. It's 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 like this is. It makes it difficult to make that transition. But if we are willing to set that aside, we can say, "Hey, I did do stuff with the team. We had missions. We had tasks. We had conditions. We had training. All these things to do. Why can't I?" find support from my local brothers and sisters in arms now right you know and get out there and reach out to the people that you know that you can trust develop those relationships because that'll be a huge part of your healing process so with that being said after doing my master's degree and getting toward my counseling I was working uh, I got to working for a unit called East Texas Veteran Resource Center which is what you mentioned earlier it is a veteran sublet of a community health corps here in our local area and uh, we basically provide services to veterans and we are part of our web page is helpforvets.com we're on Facebook at Help for Vets um, but our main meat and beans of what we do is housing homeless veterans helping them with utility assistance I mean we don't pay mortgages but we do try to get them in housing of some kind rent where they can pay rent and try to transition back so that's one of the things we do the other things we do is the uh, my part of it I'm a mental health peer navigator. Tying in with my degree, um, I offer counseling to veterans, their dependents, and a surviving spouse. Now, veterans get a lot of benefits, especially if they're honorably discharged. But what do dependents and surviving spouses get? They have rights too. They have certain things that they should be able to uh, get tied into. With that, being able to reach out and help those individuals. I know American Legions, Viet, uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Disabled American Veterans, Vietnam Veterans of America, all these different entities have gone and helped people that are widowed, lost their military spouse or what have you. Well, we're able to do that too, to a degree. So we would help these folks and we'd say, hey, I can give you eight sessions of counseling at no charge to you, fully confidential. We're not reporting to any VA or your job or anything like that, this is a place where you can let some of that out. Uh, tell your story. It goes back to me. My big thing is tell your story because it's going to help somebody someday. Uh, but needless to say, with that, uh, connecting with all the veteran organizations in our local here, area here in Northeast Texas, I got tied into another organization that was uh, providing services and they were looking about trying to put an event together. And they started talking about, you know, an event for the ladies, uh, women who have been through some struggles, have trauma, this, that, and the other. And I started bringing up, what about female veterans? What about their family members? And things like that. And eventually, after that was all said and done, a couple weeks later, they're like, hey, we're not doing a woman's event. We're doing a veteran's event. And, by the way, you're the chair. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. And we uh, dubbed the event Veterans Salute. We had our first run of it last year um, with the idea of bringing to light um, the struggles that are real, that are out there for veterans, their family members, 
uh, for those who are surviving, you know, who lost a loved one uh, that served in the military. Uh, it was a way that we could connect the community with those people, the veterans, and the veterans to the community, and the goal was to make a stronger community because we all had skill sets in the military. We all were part of a team. And how much better can you grow a community, grow your city, grow your town, grow your state, or whatever, without those connections. It's a whole concept of continuing to follow that teamwork, cohesion, let's make things happen. Because you get enough people driven with the goal, that's good goal, good purpose, you can get anything accomplished. Uh, you know, so that's what we did. Uh, we put it together in six months time. Uh, we were fairly successful. We had over 300 and some odd people that showed up to the event after only planning it for six months. We raised $1,300 beyond what our cost was for the event. We didn't make a dime off any of this. Right. All of us were volunteers, and we just wanted to help veterans and reach out to veterans. And uh, $1,300, we turned around and gave back to veteran organizations instantly. <laughs> I look forward to your visit. I'm sorry. I was like, I wait a minute. That's all somebody was saying. Look forward. Okay. That's why I don't wear my glasses because I start reading everybody's comments. Um, but, um... Yeah, so that thirteen hundred dollars didn't go back into any of our pockets. We had speakers. We had we talked mm -hmm. about PTSD. Uh, can you overcome it? Uh, is it healable? And yes, I believe it is. We talked about dispelling myths. You know, not all military veterans are horrible people. You've got business owners. You've got really successful people right there in your community that's a veteran. Mm -hmm that you probably didn't even know was a veteran. Right. Because of some of the stigma that goes along with being veterans. And, oh, you know, I hated it when I came back. The first question when I said I was a veteran that served in Iraq. Two questions I didn't want to hear. Did you shoot someone? Or were you shot at? Mm. And in my mind, I was like, you know, that's probably something you don't need to know right now. <laughs> you know? Um, I don't know why that was the first question out of everybody uh, you know I do appreciate people that say thank you for your service and everything else not much on being called a hero as you mentioned earlier not most of us aren't uh, some of us might but uh, essentially it's a it's a you know certain ways that you can just express your appreciation to veterans and try to get to know them and then if you as you get to know them you never know what stories you might get from them uh, you can hear some of their things that they face, and there's some things people aren't necessarily prepared for. Um, so it's it's a hit and miss thing, you know. I don't want somebody to be traumatized because they hear my story or hear another friend of mine or that's a veteran story, you know. But on the same token, you know, support your veterans, support those who have been through struggles, traumas, trials. It's not only veterans with PTSD or PTS. Anybody can get it from accidents, natural disasters, criminal activities, different things like that, that someone could suffer from these things. But the key point is, is if you hold all this in and you don't have a support system in place, it's really difficult to transition and move forward. It's hard to get yourself out of stuck mud hole and a bottom of a pit without somebody above you with the rope saying, hey, we're going to try and help you up. Um, so... That's what we did with the Veteran Salute, was try to connect these people. We had a lot of veteran organizations out there, a couple of veteran-owned businesses, car show, live music. We wanted to entertain and just give the veterans a place to just go and have a decent time, but also to connect to all the resources. So that was what Veteran Salute came up. And we're on our second year coming up real soon. Same thing, live band, car show, uh, different topics. We have a couple of ladies that are going to be there presenting at our breakfast um, that wrote a book from our local area in Cass County. They went out and interviewed World War II veterans that were still here, and they wrote a book about their story. That's so cool. So their stories are being told. And I, when I found out you were here, I was like, she's getting people's story out there, and that is an important part of being and growing. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's helpful for veterans to be able to share their stories, mm -hmm. to find out the resources that are available to them, because in our small county, in our small community, you know, we're out in the country, you've seen it, <laughs> you've been That's here. That's why I've had no internet connection, guys, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, you know, there's still veterans out here. As a matter of fact, we've got the largest population of veterans in our county in the state of Texas. 
out of all the other counties. That's right, you told me that. And Texas is the number, the highest population of female veterans out of the nation. Hmm. So there's a lot of veterans down here in Texas, you I, know, and being out in the country, they're out there too. <laughs> so, um, you know, reaching out to them, letting them know what resources are available. That way they can get back on their feet if they're struggling. That's the key thing. You sign your name on a blank check up to it, including your life to the U.S. government. You served in peacetime and war. Whether you served in war or not, it doesn't matter. You're still a veteran. You served in the military. And being in the military is a commitment that not everybody can do. There's a special breed of people that serve in the military. There's a special breed of people that serve as first responders. These people willing to risk their lives to help others. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying there are not more people out there or other agencies or things that exist are. for that. Because they are. Right. But there's, it's a special, in my opinion, it's a special breed to just say, yes, I'm going to do that. Right. And uh, I appreciate all my brothers and sisters, and I look up to many of them as heroes myself. You know, many of them saw way yes. more than I did, uh, experienced more than I did. Um, but being able to hear their stories and be witness to the change in their life is such a wonderful thing to do. You know, when things start getting back around and moving on the new norm. Yeah. You know, I heard a one of my buddies earlier talking to you about you're not broken completely you can become a new uh, a new you, yes. you can become new transition to something new that's what's up you, you, you get out of the military it doesn't mean it's the end of the world it doesn't mean that everything is going to go to junk it means now you have an adjustment to make just like in the military my branch specifically adapt and overcome you adapt, you overcome, and you become something new. Right. And hopefully that new is something that's reaching out and helping others who are struggling. Because mm -hmm. how important is it that we help one another to move forward in our day-to-day -day existence? If we didn't have communities, if we didn't have organizations that came together, there's a lot of stuff that wouldn't get done in this country. And it's important, the teamwork, the cohesion that exists there. I'm a huge supporter of network, Find people you can connect with, establish a network, move forward with that network, and oh man, the things you can accomplish is beyond real. So, uh, I didn't go into a lot of my own experience. I am a combat veteran. I served in Kosovo with the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. I also served in Iraq, uh, OEF, OIF, with 3rd Infantry Division out of Georgia. And I was over there when they brought Saddam out of the hole. Uh, I was in Kosovo when <laughs> we had to go and recover a drone. Uh, you know, different things I've been experienced and part of, but, uh, you know, essentially I was what I like to call myself a father. But I had my mission. You know, my mission was to keep people rolling in their vehicles, keep them out and taking the task. And I was also the one that went out to where they were when they were broke. So I did see my fair share of a little bit of action. I mentioned earlier to you when I was in Kosovo, I drove down the middle of a minefield to recover a Humvee right. about a hundred foot down on the side of a cliff stuck on a tree. You know, it was quite of an experience for me. Um, but Iraq was really the one that, that got to me the most. Seeing uh, seeing all that I saw, having to take one of my lower, uh, one of my subordinate sergeants, uh, however you want to say it, I always looked at him as equal, but Yes, I had sergeants under my uh, supervision, and I had to take one to the combat stress hospital. And I remember him saying, Sergeant Bolt, don't let them put me out of the military. This is all I know. This is all I am. I said, man, I'm going to do whatever I can for you. Well, needless to say, he did get put out of the military. Um, but last I heard, he was doing all right and well. Uh, it wasn't as bad of a transition as he thought. Okay. And, of course, he did get some disability from that. Uh, but, you know, I got to hear stories from people younger than me by 15, 20 years, you know, an 18-year-old, 19-year-old that got hit by an IED. Uh, I got to see their scars. Uh, having a young man um, have an episode for certain smells that triggered something in him, and I'm not going into detail because I don't want any major stuff to happen, but you know a little bit about them. You know, I saw that, and then myself, the close call I had was I was about to go work on one of those vehicles, and just as I was heading out to that vehicle, I got called to the side for another one of my soldiers, 
hey, they're having trouble, go help them. Five minutes into helping my soldier, the vehicle I was about to work on got hit by a mortar round and blew the whole cab up where I would have been working. So I guess I'm still here for a reason, and I'm glad to be here for a reason. And, you know, finding meaning and purpose beyond all that we go through means you have hope and you can bring hope to others, and that's a huge message I want to get across. I mean, our veteran salute is just a small piece of that. Lancer Legacy Ranch that you're here at now, it's a small piece of that. People wanting to give back, saying, veterans, we appreciate your service, we love you, and we want you to be fully back to who you were, a new creation, a new person, out there having a, a, a simulance of normalcy and uh, being able to connect and share your story and who knows who you can help and what kind of difference you can make. So. I don't know if you have some other questions I kind of no. raved on. But. Oh, that's what my message is all about. Sharing stories, sharing experiences, sharing this message. This message, guys, I've interviewed, I don't know, 50 veterans and first responders now. I've lost track. But their message, almost every one of them, every story is different, every experience is different, but their message is the same. That's why... You know, I ask you to share these videos. I'm sorry. Sometimes you can hear my air conditioning running. The sound quality is good. I'm not a professional. Um, we had to turn the AC on. We can't be in the building in here because we were, we got no connection when I interviewed Matt. So um, <clears throat> so I'm sorry about sometimes the quality and one of them had no volume at all. But it's the same message. And um, transitioning is very, very hard. So... You said everything I was hoping you would. There's no coaching going on here. And um, I want to thank you so, so, so much for coming to meet me today. He actually came back. He shared his story with me. We talked for about an hour. And then um, I didn't get a chance to interview him because I've had so many veterans here today. It's like such a marathon, like I said. And um, he actually came back. He drove another 30 hours to come back and share. Uh, 30 that. minutes, yeah. 30 <laughs> minutes. What did I say, 30 hours? <laughs> yes, you did. That would have been I a long. I am so tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had a marathon today. I, I, I do appreciate you getting out there and telling people these stories. Uh, yeah. You know, I have Thank peer you. groups that I lead. And the whole idea of peer groups is veterans sharing their stories with one another. You know, veteran says, man, I ain't been able to find work or whatever. And, they, oh, hey, I heard this place is hired. And that solves an immediate yeah. need right then and there. And that's what sharing our story and being with other people can do is you never know what you're going to hear from others where you might have the answer to something they're looking for. Or when you're listening to someone, even if you want to be quiet and just sit back and be just all in your own little just listening, you never know when you're going to get the answers you're looking for. That's true. Now I have something to ask you yes would you sing us that song <laughs> sing a song <laughs> oh my goodness you, <laughs> yeah you i did tell song. you i did sing a couple of times in the military he shared a uh, song with me today and it it he got a little emotional and i was very very touched what's the name of the song paradise paradise by craig morgan morgan i'd never heard it before well, the, uh, uh, just a little backdrop on that. I was 101st Airborne Division for most of my career, and uh, that's who I went to Kosovo with. But Craig Morgan was also a member of the 101st at one time, and he became a Nashville recording artist. And he started. He did a couple of videos out at the post. And that's when I had heard of him. I didn't actually meet him face-to-face. -face. I, you know, I can't say that. But, you know, I started hearing his songs, and one of the songs he did was called Paradise for his time in the service. And it starts out like a cadence. Uh, do you really want me to sing it, or yeah, do you go just? Ahead, sing oh it. my goodness! I haven't had anybody sing for me yet. <laughs> just, oh just my. go ahead. Just yeah, do I'm it. embarrassed for that don't part, be but anyway. Just do it. Nobody's uh, watching. Nobody's watching. Go I don't ahead. know why I live. Come on. But I know it won't be long. No, it won't be long till I get back home. Gave me a green uniform, black boots on my feet. Eighteen and wild as hell, I thought it would be neat. 
Stuck me on a plane to some strange and foreign land. Said goodbye to mom and dad and hello to Uncle Sam. Once I was a soldier, not afraid to die. Now I'm a little older, and I'm not afraid to cry. Every day I'm thankful just to be alive. If you've been where I've been, any kind of life is paradise. And then he, uh, the next part of it goes, and I'm, uh, I'm probably off because I don't have music in my ears, but anyway. Christmas of 89 was a lonely time for me. Panama was probably nice, but it was nothing like Tennessee. Never thought the day would come when I might have to kill a man. I did not sleep a wink that night, but we won for Uncle Sam. And it goes back into this chorus. Once I was a soldier, not afraid to cry. I mean, not afraid to die. Now I'm a little older, and I'm not afraid to die. Every day I'm thankful just to be alive if you've been where i've been any kind of life is paradise and that's uh, pretty much the song and pardon me if i butchered it you are so craig talented. morgan just no. <laughs> don't don't come after me <laughs> craig call me <laughs> that was awesome i've, I've uh, never had anybody sing a song for me he um mentioned the song to me he told me a little bit about it i listened to it on youtube we listened to it together and i was so touched by it so he didn't know i was going to tell him to sing it <laughs> all right this okay. was on the spot <laughs> i know that's the best time but yeah i guess i should have watched my mouth sometimes moving too fast because i did tell you i did sing a little bit in the military matter of fact when oh, i was I'm listening when i was in uh iraq <laughs> uh my grandfather passed away yeah and i was real close to him and I wasn't able to go home for that. I used to work with him in the summer times and everything else. Well, there was a talent show going on and that I'd already been a part of before he mm -hmm. passed. And I got up there, and the talent show time had come, and I was like, you know, uh, I've just recently been able to talk to my grandpa. It's been a little bit. I don't know if he's still here or not, but if you would allow me, because I can't go home, I would like to sing a song uh -huh. for him, to him, because it reminded me of him growing up so much. And they said, absolutely, go right ahead. So I got up there, just kind of like here, Acapello, and I sung that song. It's called Touch of the Master's Hand. Um, and I just told the people, I don't know how many soldiers, Marines, Air Force, Navy, whatever was out there, but there was hundreds of people in front of me, and I said, I'm doing this for my grandpa. Whether he's here with me right now, still on this earth, or if he's gone and left this world behind, I know he'll hear my song, and I sung that song, and then I followed it up with Born to Boogie by Bo Cephas. <laughs> but uh, Touch of the Master's Hand uh, really sunk into me a lot, and that's not necessarily a military song, but it was talking about, you know, there's this auction going on at this estate, and they've got a last item to sell is this old violin. And, you know, the, per the auctioneer got on, it's okay, this is it, we're going to end. Give me one dollar, give me two dollars, who will make it three, three dollars twice, that's a good price, how about another bid for me? And uh, that was about it, he got up to maybe four dollars, and then all of a sudden a gray-haired man come up from the back of the room, moved forward, picked up the violin, wiped off the dust, tightened down the strings, and then he played a melody so pure, as sweet as the angels sing. Aww. And my grandpa used to play the violin, oh, the guitar. And, you know, he had silver hair, and, you know, and he, he was, he sung, a lot of my family has sung, um, but, yeah, I just like that, you know, Grandpa, I remember those things, and it was good to be able to get that, because even though we ain't able to come home, it's nice to be able to have that moment where we can grieve in, in an aspect, and I encourage people, if you're struggling, if you've lost people, um, if you're feeling guilt, you know, it should have been me or whatever, it's okay to grieve, but find you some support and get the grief in. Uh, don't let it. Don't carry that burden by yourself. It's not an easy burden to carry. Um, you know, we all need our help, and 
once again, I go back to network, team connection, team cohesion. Find those people you trust. Find those people you love. And that'll be the huge, the, the biggest help for you in transitioning from military back to civilian. Even if you're a civilian and never served in the military, if you went through a struggle or a trial, you know, if you were a first responder, didn't serve in the military, but you were a first responder and you've seen some things, find some people to help you to work through that and move forward. Share your story because you never know who you're going to help. That's right. That's what I'm all about, sharing these stories, because I think it's making a big difference. Okay. So, thank you again for coming back. No problem. Uh, I have one more interview to do. It's been a whirlwind today. Um, there is a veteran here that was rescued, and um, he is going to share his story with me very soon before I drop. <laughs> and uh, I think his story is going to be very compelling. He told me just a little bit about it, and this is a very inspirational story. So. Um, you're actually on the board of directors here at Lancer Legacy Ranch. Yes. Um, so he knows the story. So probably in the next 30 minutes, if any of you guys are, uh, we have a couple people online here. If you want to watch the next live video, it is actually with a veteran who's a resident here at Lancer Legacy Ranch. And he's doing very well. So I can't wait to share his story. So thank you, thank you, thank you no so, problem. so, so much. Thanks for the serenade. <laughs> You're awesome. God All right. Y'all take you, care. Everybody. Thanks for the love and support and prayers.